or medicinal chemistry to a political science and then get a, a degree in, in, in a scientific field. But nevertheless, in, in the soft stuff, you could always switch. In the hard stuff, either you cut the mustard or you stop serving sandwiches. It's that simple. So uh, the debates are on tonight. We're supposed to get all excited over it. We got the Hillary montage. We got the, uh, the, the Anderson Cooper job. I mean, come on. You know, it's not going to be a big deal. What would you really ask Hillary if you had a chance to ask a real question? You know and I know the whole debate is set up because Depi Wasserwoman Schultz, Depi, Depi, Depi Wasserwoman Schultz had to do a debate. Depi Wasserwoman Schultz. You know, now that I'm thinking about Debbie Wasserwoman Schultz as the type of woman, now that I'm thinking about it, would she be a perfect match for Bernie Sanders? I know there's an age difference, but maybe she has a thing for older guys. They'd be a perfect couple. Could you imagine a, a socialist versus a psycho? He's not crazy. He's just a nut, a socialist nut of a low order. She's absolutely nuts, in my opinion, which is why she was picked to be the DNC. Who else can talk to the donors who give money to the Democrat Party at a time of Muslim invasion? Who else can give money to this party? except grifters who look to get something back, or people who are mentally disturbed. So Debbie Wasserwurm and Schultz is, is perfect for this. So if, if I were to make a match that would be the match of all matches, it would be Debbie Wasserwurm and Schultz announces she's in love with Bernie Sanders. She's leaving her, I don't know who she's with, by the way, no slur intended. I have no idea whether she's married or with a partner, like Gabby Hayes. Here's my partner. I mean, partner, where'd that come from? Gabby Hayes had a partner, it was a Lone Ranger. Anyway, I don't know who Debbie Wasserwoman Schultz is with. Leaves the husband, and she runs off with Bernie Sanders. I have no idea who he's with. Can you, does he have a long-suffering wife? I have to Google this. Robert, Google see if, if Bernie Sanders has a, a commie wife going back to New York in the 50s. Maybe they were friends of the Rosenbergs. I don't really know. In fact, the more I look at the... If I were to do a movie right now, if I were, if I were doing a movie after, after um, Bernie gets knocked out of the box, I would offer him a part to play... Uh, 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 Julius Rosenberg in, in, in the musical version, not the actual series version. It would be a, a musical on Broadway called uh, The Dancing Spies. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I'm going to tune in tonight just to see uh, Bernie Sanders. I want to see if he you know, falls in his face. He's going to be scared to death. He's going to be scared to death, and he's going to overcompensate and sound more like a rug merchant from uh, Orchard Street than ever before. You know, if you want the Rosenbergs to be president, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, you couldn't pick better than, uh, than Bernie Sanders, in my opinion. Look at the wife. Godard College a Ph.D. in leadership studies and politics from the Union Institute and University? Zee, go. Oh. She has organized youth service, another community organizer. Now, she was, she was Burlington College's president, and she relocated the campus from a 16,000-square-foot area to one which was 70, 77,000 square feet. Accusations surfaced about Bernie Sanders' wife that this move may have led the school into financial ruin. But that would never stop a communist or a socialist from doing it again. Look what Obama's done to America. Just because he's ruined our relations with Russia, brought him back 50 years, and has destroyed the economy except for the very, very, very wealthy donors uh, and those surrounding them. Uh, he's relocated the economy to who? The pockets of his, of his uh, supporters. So this is typical of leftists. And if you look at Jane Sanders, the financial ruin info, the college uh, is in real trouble. Responsible for the school's near demise last year. This is Bernie Sanders' wife. She overleveraged the institution by borrowing 10 mil to finance a campus expansion. And she's never been formally charged, by the way, but she did resign quietly in 2011. That's who Bernie Sanders' wife is. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is going to be a harder day's night tonight watching Hillary Clinton, perhaps the most unattractive candidate imaginable, next to uh, Bernie uh, 
Bernie Sanders. I mean, what a what a group, what a quinella they picked for tonight. How could a party have such losers running as the... Let me explain something. Just because they're a Democrat doesn't mean they have to be anti-Americans, anti-business, anti-family, anti-church, anti-God, and anti-gun. But they picked three people who are exactly that. Anti-American, anti-family, anti-God, anti-gun. How in the world can anyone vote for them except the small fringe group of academics and media types? You know that there's no, no, there's no debate tonight. There's no real debate. A real debate would have been 10, 12 candidates across the entire spectrum of the Democrat Party. I don't even know if there's a spectrum anymore. There was a time when you had patriotic Democrats. I don't know if they exist anymore. You know, those who believed in borders, language, and culture. John F. Kennedy would be running as a right-wing conservative today. I've said that for years. John F. Kennedy, if he were a candidate, would be running as a borders, language, culture guy. He certainly wouldn't be in league with Hillary Clinton. He wouldn't be in league with the Bernie the Socialist Sanders. And O'Malley, I don't know who he is. I have no idea. I never heard of him. I don't know who he is. I don't know what he does. I don't know where they got him from. I don't know why he's up there. I think he's just a third person to make it look like a debate. We know it's a fake because Anderson Cooper has been selected to be the, nar the narrator, not the moderator. Notice I said narrator. He's going to narrate the uh, debate tonight to make sure all of them look centrist and loving America. And that they only want fairness and equality. And they're going to ask such stupid questions that it's not going to be worth watching. And I gave you some examples in the last hour. They're asking, this is what Anderson Cooper can be expected to ask. Uh, Mrs. Clinton, the power of ISIS is growing exponentially, and they're becoming more and more vicious. Mrs. Clinton, what is it that amazes you most about camels? The next question Anderson Cooper might ask would be this. Mrs. Clinton, President Obama's deal with Iran has met with great criticism around the world. Do you think Persian rug sales will increase in the United States? And here's a tough one for you, Mrs. Clinton, uh, brought to you by Anderson Cooper. China is becoming an economic and cybersecurity threat to our nation. Mrs. Clinton, what's the best fortune you ever got from a Chinese fortune cookie? Uh, you, you get the picture. It's going to all be nonsense, and uh, people are probably going to tune in the, the shows that are on the other channels. I, I, my guess is MTV will outdraw the Democrat so-called debate tonight, because MTV has the Hip Hop Awards, which is not really good for Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, because a good portion of their constituency will be watching the Hip Hop Awards. They're not going to watch this. What percent? Here's a good, an interesting question. If this was a political science class, I would say to you, what percentage of Hillary Clinton's demographic will be watching the MTV Awards tonight, the Hip Hop Awards, rather than listening to her debate? Is it 80 percent, 85 percent? or closer to 90 percent. Uh, none of the above, all of the above. It's the savage nation, and you know there's no debate. Here's some headlines. Top physicist says Obama has picked the wrong side on climate change. Now, you know that's true. He's one of the world's greatest theoretical physicists. Works at Princeton. And he says carbon dioxide does far more good than harm. Gee, no kidding. No, how long? How many years have I been telling you that without carbon dioxide, there'd be no vegetables and no fruits? There'd be no plant life. But you see, that's something that uh, Barack Obama didn't learn in, in political science. Here in California, disabilities rights advocates fight back after California passes assisted suicide. No kidding. Isn't that amazing? Why would disability advocates be frightened of a, a lunatic like Jerry Brown passing the assisted suicide bill? Because they object to the willful termination of human life that the bill permits and are concerned that it will allow elderly, ill, or disabled patients coerced to choose death. Jerry Brown knows that. It's really, it's eerie. It's eerie what's going on right now. Speaking of Jerry Brown, he signed the bill, the new Motor Voter Act, which I've called the Department of Mexican Voters for years. Every time I've gone to the DMV for, how many years have I called the Department of Mexican Voting? Sarcastically, like forever? Well... Jerry Brown passed the bill, the New Motor Voter Act, which will automatically register people to vote through the DMV, which will result in millions of illegal aliens voting forever. Meanwhile, at the Vatican, rebel cardinals have accused the communist Pope Francis 
of stacking the cards against them. The conservative cardinals are accusing the commie pope of stacking the cards against them in an ongoing battle over issues including the church's approach to gays and to divorce three married believers. It emerged Monday. In a letter sent to the pontiff on October 5th, a group of cardinals described procedures for three weeks of discussions as designed to facilitate predetermined, result, predetermined results on important disputed questions. In other words, the Pope is a dictator. What else is new? No, the Catholic Church is fair. My friends, things have never been worse. In some ways, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. In that way, it's like most times. We know what happened since Teddy Kennedy passed the 1965 immigration rewrite. We know America's immigration visas were opened up to almost anyone in the world. We know that since then, millions of them have come in, which has entitled them to collect welfare, take U.S. jobs at lower pay, cast ballots in U.S. elections, and to bring in unlimited amounts of relatives into the United States. We know that because of Ted Kennedy, the drunk's 1965 immigration law, it made it so easy for illegal aliens to break into this country that the foreign-born population in the U.S. has climbed from fewer than 10 million immigrants in 1970 to more than 42 million immigrants, legal and illegal, today. Do you know that America now has four times more immigrants living here than in any other country on the, on the, uh, on the globe? And among those entering illegally or legally are the foreign workers that Zuckerberg, Microsoft, and the others, Disney, want the cheap workers on the H-1B visas to replace higher-waged American workers. Among the others who have flooded into this country are the 280,000 Muslim immigrants the U.S. lets in each and every year on U.S. visas. 280,000 Muslims come in legally with the full permission of the United States government. And as a result of that, more than 500,000 U.S. girls are now at risk of female genital mutilation because throwback Islamist migrants from countries like Ethiopia and Somalia are now living amongst us, practicing a 9th or 10th century barbarism that should not be permitted in a civilized nation. All of this can be found in my chapter on zero immigration in government zero, a book that's been climbing the charts before it's been published. And you'll be hearing much more about it when it comes out in exactly two weeks. What are the questions you would like Anderson Blooper to actually ask Hillary Clinton? Or is there anyone out there who even knows who Bernie Sanders is? Most people never heard of him. They're going to see a little guy who looks like Woody Allen's grandfather in a crumpled suit, speaking with a heavy Brooklyn accent, speaking about fairness and taxation. He's going to, move, he's going to make Hillary Clinton look like a centrist. That's his job. Think of it as a circus. Hillary Clinton uh, is, as you well know, going to be the candidate. And this has been set up by the Clinton machine to make her look centrist. So who have they chosen? They've chosen a, a radical comedic left. He's a comic leftist. He's a stereotype of a lunatic. If you were doing a Saturday night, not Saturday, if you were doing uh, what's that cartoon that I like once in a while, whatever. I can't remember them. It's a cartoon character, guys. Uh, I guess two shows I like on MTV once once a year I watch them but if you were doing one of a crackpot left winger it would be a cartoon of Bernie Sanders Bernie Sanders is like uh, Larry David's crazy communist uncle and as, as leftist as Larry David is I, you know Larry no one even knows who he is he did a funny series he wrote Seinfeld made a lot of money with it okay let's put it this way take all of the leftists in Hollywood Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, Geffen, all of them. Now imagine they have a communist uncle somewhere in Brooklyn who worked for the uh, International Ladies' Garment Workers' Union, the ILGWU. And every time they get together, he literally foams at the mouth talking against America. That's who Bernie Sanders is, by the way. So what would you ask of Bernie Sanders? I could imagine asking him, what would your strategy be against ISIS? And I don't know what the answer might be. I can guess it. I believe that the reason ISIS is uh, so vicious in their attacks against people is because of lack of economic opportunity. And if I become president, the first thing I would do is reach out to the head of ISIS. And although they hate Jews, I'm sure that they'll talk to me because I'm not really Jewish. I was born Jewish, but I am a non-practicing Jew. 
and as a non-practicing Jew, I am sure that uh, the head of ISIS, 